I don't actually remember this, but I, it's probably quite accurate. Um, when I was in my mother's room, the White Album was released and uh, she bought it for my dad, who started playing it um, for probably about two years in a row. So I didn't know until I got to about 14 or 15, I didn't realise the significance of this until I was listening to a Motley Crue album and Helter Skelter came on and I knew all the words and obviously that's a cover of Helter Skelter that's on the White Album. So I kind of said to my mum, you know, this is really weird because I know this music and uh, she said, oh, that's on the White Album. So I got the White Album out and started listening to that. So we lived in California for a short spell in the early 80s, from 81 to 85. Um, and then I came back here and discovered the pub, and, uh, which was fantastic. But I remember coming in from the pub one night, switching on BBC Two, and it was a tiny little black and white TV um, with one of those serials on the top. And they were showing Pink Floyd live at Pompeii, and uh, I, was, I was really blown away by that, so I loved Floyd. I started playing violin when I was, I don't know, when I had to. You know, it's one of those things, you know, you can play the violin, it's like, okay. Um, and could play, and I think they were quite surprised because we haven't got people in the family that particularly play anything. So. But I took up the trumpet, so once I started playing the trumpet, which had fingers like that, I was then starting to play the trumpet, fingers, fingers on the violin. So I gave up the violin, took up the trumpet instead, and started to learn jazz and, um, and normal traditional kind of things. I still play that now, and I've picked up the violin again now, but I'm absolutely rubbish. But it's one of those things, if I didn't spend so much time doing other stuff, I'd probably start playing that again. We can't go past the going to America. Well, uh, what was all that about? How did that come about? Um, well, it was the early 80s, and it was all the time of um, you know, computers coming out and everything like that. And my dad was hunted, headhunted by a California company called Point Four Data Corporation. Um, so we went. You know, it's a fantastic opportunity and we lived in Southern California for four years. So from, from the age of 12 to 16, so I went over there and I was really, really shy and uh, very retiring and stuff before we went over. Um, but not anymore, particularly, because uh, it's, um, they're lovely, warm people and they encourage you to, to, to be your best. Really. Um, that's really when I kind of, I, I took a trumpet big time there. Um, um, got involved with, we had a really good, it's, it sort of sounds very boring now, but we had a massive um, marching band, I think we were about 130 people in the actual band, plus Colour Guard, we toured all over California. Um, we were part of the Hollywood uh, parade, we were part of the Olympics in the 80s when it was over there. Um, we played on football fields and stuff like that, so I'm never worried, you know, about performing, it doesn't bother me at all. Um, so yeah, just just fa fantastic opportunity. But also, there was a guy there called Mr. Darker, I think his name was, and he was this little um, tiny guy with huge hair. And he's, he's, he came up to me. He's like, Tanini, you've got to be in my jazz band. And, and I was like, well, I don't know anything about jazz. And he said, No, you've got to be. But I think because the jazz band, there were only about 15 people, and they were all like 15-year-old boys. So, um, and I was your typical by then blonde Californian. So um, I think he kind of wanted a girl that could play something in his jazz band. As, as you do, so I got quite into that. Um, it's not really something that I want to play now, but it's just, it adds to my appreciation, I think, of music. I like all sorts of stuff. You were a, a blonde Californian girl in this big jazz band full of, full of guys uh, touring California. That still seems odd. <laughs> it's still just with the schools, but the yeah. schools are really into it, the high schools, and plus we were, it was a big band and we were very good, so we did go all around. I should have bought my picture, I've got a yeah. picture of us in our uniforms. I think we were called the Matadors, um, with those, you know, the trousers with the striped down the yeah. side. Yeah. <laughs> Are you still in touch with any of those people from that time? No, um, I'm still in touch with a couple of friends, um, an old boyfriend and my best friend um, via Facebook. They found me on Facebook. Um, so. Yeah, yeah, I'm still in touch. Facebook's brilliant, isn't it? What were your friends into in, in America at that time? What sort of music were they getting into? Heavy metal. Right. The ones that I liked. And, um, yeah, big time, big time. Um, they were either, at the time, in the early 80s, you were into either Duran Duran or um, Aussie. So we hung out 
there were two walls at our high school basically. There was one wall that was the rockers' wall and another wall that was for the new rows. So I was with the rockers. Obviously. New rows, that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's a good name for it, isn't it? I remember discovering Ozzy and I was watching MTV um, and we'd not long moved to the States. Before we went over there, I was into Adam and the Ants big time. I really liked Adam and the Ants and Kim Wilde and people like that. And then we got, to, we got over there and I was watching MTV one day. And this mad guy with hair comes up, no shirt on, loads of tattoos, and then um, it's Aussie. And I've, I was really blown away by that. So, uh, so yeah, I really got into Aussie Osborne. And then, of course, Black Sabbath and all the rest of it. Um, but at the time, it was people like um, Def Leppard were out, um, Bon Jovi, um, Great White, Twisted Sister, YMT. Uh, people like that, so that was the kind of stuff I was really into then. And MTV was becoming a real influencer at that point as yeah, well. Yeah, massively, massively. So was that the key? Was everybody just watching MTV? Yeah, and getting that's it? what we did. Yeah, and certainly. I mean, that was that would have been '81, so it probably wasn't in the UK then, but certainly um, California. That's what we did. You just you know, MTV because it wasn't like I don't know what MTV's like now, but it was just music. It, mm. it, there was none of this. Uh, you know, series about rock stars or anything like that, it was just purely music. Left from Northampton um, and then went over to California and came back to Welling Garden City because that's where my mum's family were, so we kind of needed a base. So I discovered the joys of uh, Hertfordshire. Um, and stayed there, when we came back, I stayed until uh, I was going on a walking holiday with my mum up in this kind of area and we were staying on a, a deer farm and we were doing lots and lots of walking in Wales and uh, we decided to have a day off and just go shopping and we, we came to Worcester um, and I just fell in love with Worcester, just absolutely fell in love with it and obviously the Malvern Hills and the, uh, the Severn and everything. Um, so I went back to my job in Welling Garden City, gave my notice in and came over here in 92. Did you come back with an American accent? Yes. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So, that, so, what did your new English friends make of this? Well, American they accent? called me. They called me mascara woman. Um, they liked it. I mean, they, they liked it, and obviously, it's it's like I came back and went straight to college. So you, you've got that kind of group of people that um, you know everyone wants to make friends at that age anyway, don't you? So uh, yeah, it was good. I liked it. And your musical culture, then you're coming back into rock and as well. Did oh. that? make you friends straight away or did you stand out from your friends being into that sort of music? No, because I think you find people, don't you, that are into the same stuff and I really got into one of the guys that I used to hang out with um, at the student union wing was this guy who's really into the cure and I think his name was Nigel and he had this big hair, he was such a real neat looking guy and he gave me this tape of the cure, um, I think it was them and uh, yeah, I quite like that, I think people I'm into music, so if people kind of, you know, they find out they're into it as well. Um, you, you tend to kind of show each other stuff, don't you? And, and just say, oh, listen to this, listen to that. So, so yeah, it's, um, yeah, just, just had a lot of fun with, with just finding out new stuff, really, and English stuff rather than American rock. The band's not solo as much, or? or yeah, yeah, it's I like bands. Yeah, too. yeah, I think so, yeah, I, I, like, um, I like rock bands. Yeah. Yeah. What was it about rock bands that? It's exciting, um, I think. I, I typically like a four-piece band. I particularly like bands where the guys have got hair, a lot of hair, um, or certainly used to. Uh, you're going to ask me who I'm into now, and uh, that's, that would be me model army that I'm really into now. They're quite hairy. Um, but yeah, I think just, I, I like, um, I like you, you know, quite heavy, Beat and I like I like proper drums, you know. Um, yeah, I just like that traditional kind of setup. I remember my my uh, grand? She said to me that she wanted um, it was my birthday coming up, and she said, "What do you want for your birthday?" And I wanted Kiss, um, the Kiss album Love Gun, and probably a meatloaf thing. And she went to Tower Records and asked for Kiss's Love Gun, <laughs> which I remember that because that just. Uh, struck me as quite, quite amusing, really, to see an old lady asking yeah. for a love gun. <laughs> <laughs> you said you couldn't <laughs> <laughs>